Hey guys, good morning. It's Rebecca and you are watching Rebecca Undum Live. Um, hey, Instagram, good morning. It's Rebecca Undum. And uh, I just, it was taking me a little bit here. I So interestingly enough, um, for all of you that know, and for those of you that don't, I live in the middle of, um, really kind of in the middle of nowhere in rural North Dakota. And that is what I'm here to do. I'm here to help women in small towns live their big, big lives. And often what I hear from women is that rural internet kind of sucks sometimes. And historically, I feel really lucky. We are we really have good internet here. Um, hey, good morning, Rhonda. And I, if anybody that's lived that's lived in a small town or you know kind of a, a decent distance from a bigger city, you really forget how crappy rural internet can be. Ours is normally really good. Well, I'm sitting here and there's no preview coming up. And you know it's one of those things where you're like, well, crap. I don't know if this is all going to work, but here we are. I think we're all good. Everybody can see me and hear me. I assume we got people coming on. Hey, good morning, Sherry. Hi, guys. I love all the, the like, I get the waves from you guys on Instagram. I love it. Okay, good morning. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. So um, how was your weekend? Maybe we should talk about that real quick as people are <clears throat> kind of coming on board. I have a few like random little updates um, to share from my world. So I am... Um, you know, little kids, right? So I've got my oldest is nine. My middle son just turned seven. My daughter turns four on Wednesday. Um, more on that in just a second. And so I am not um, a huge fan of taking my kids to sporting events yet. Okay. So you guys feel free to weigh in on this. Um, so we live in a small town. Sports are a really big damn deal in our small town. Like I swear they are in lots of small towns. And I uh, I was a basketball player. I love, I really do love sports. Um, but I don't find anything enjoyable about taking kids that don't give a crap and are too young and want to eat all the food and get 15,000 drinks and, you know, also just using all the restroom, like all, oh, all the stuff. Like I have no desire to deal with that. I, so you guys weigh in here. Tell me what you think. Like, is this something, because so many people in our town have been taking their little, little kids to sporting events, like you know, they're like carrying them as infants. That's actually easier. A three-year-old, four, you know, when they don't want to sit, like it's just not easy. So we went to um, our first varsity volleyball match um, since living back in Oaks. And we've got people that we love, you know, families that we love that have kids that are playing. And um, holy crap, you guys, it was so, it was so much fun. And I was like, oh, okay, one day I'm going to get to, because there's something about watching. Um, I just love the whole thing. I love watching coaches. We have a couple of really good coaches. Um, one of my good friends is a coach. Watching them and their investment in our kids, um, there is something so incredible about it. So I got to do that. And then to commemorate it, um, I bought a very, I'm going to just say it, like volleyball team here in Oaks. So it's, we're the Oaks Tornadoes. We got these really cool branded mugs as a um, fundraiser, which again, small towns all the way, you buy all the stuff, right? Like we get hit up. Stupid expensive mugs. I'm just going to say it, volleyball team. It's okay because I drink coffee every single day and I'm like, we're, we're down. But so I saw my cup and I was like, I just have to tell you guys. So I saw my first varsity volleyball match. It was actually really great. It was good. Um, and then we celebrated my daughter's birthday yesterday, um, had her big party. So she is all zhuzhed. You guys should see her today. She's wearing four bracelets and her little necklace. And oh my God, she looks so cute, but it's so much stuff. So really, really great weekend here. Lori, awesome. You're waiting for your granddaughter to be born. How exciting. Yeah, I can't even like wrap my brain around what being a grandparent is going to be like. I'm sure it's going to be completely spectacular. Okay, so as you guys are coming on, please say good morning. Please say hello. Please say what you what you what you're feeling, what you're doing this weekend. I love to hear from you guys. Today, um, I'm really excited to tell you this story. So, I think I shared last week that I'm really going to focus on telling a story that has a point, rather than just being like, "Here, do this and do this and do this," because you can find that crap anywhere. Um, I really love stories. I love storytelling. I connect with people that tell good stories. So today we're talking about um, how to learn through failure and basically how to recalibrate what failure looks like because I, I have struggled with this 
I swear to you guys, I've struggled with this for my entire life. Speaking of being, you know, an athlete, a basketball player, definitely struggled with it then. Um, but this still creeps into my life now. So there's several applications for us. I'm really excited to tell you guys the story. Okay, so are we good to go? Are we ready to learn? Are we ready to talk about how to uh, learn by failure and learn through failure? Okay, so two years ago, um, my son, Andrew, who just, you know, just turned nine, he's in fourth grade. Um, it was in second grade that he started bowling. So in our little town, we have bowling as part of like, they can bowl after school. We got Cassidy. Hang on. I got to see Cassidy. Weekend. Oh, fall works. Weaning. Pre oh, shipping. Cook. All the stuff. Now we want to sleep all week. And receiving more heifers. So Cass is my cowgirl out in New Mexico. Love you, Cass. Happy to have you here. I bet you are absolutely exhausted. I can't imagine. We don't do we don't do livestock here. Just grain farmers. So, okay, welcome, sister. Okay, so two years ago, Andrew was in second grade, and um, you can start bowling in our small town in kindergarten. And it's, they bowl once a week and it's actually, they can participate in tournaments and they can, you know, it's, but for me, I just, there was something about, it's like you're in kindergarten and you're walking up to the bowling alley after school. I just, he didn't start, he didn't start right away, right? He started in second grade. So, okay. So those of you that are joining us, we're talking about failure through learning. And I'm telling you a little story about my son, my son, Andrew, when he was in second grade, he started bowling. So he's never picked up a bowling ball. Like maybe that's a failure on my part as a mom. I have no freaking idea. We just, we're not huge bowlers, whatever. He had never, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't know how to do this. And I'm like, well, it's okay. You know, learn a new skill, whatever, do it. So the first day I pick him up and I said, Hey, you know, buddy, how'd, how'd it go? Was it fun? He's like, mom, I'm terrible at this. And I, I looked at him and I said, well, you've never bowled before. He's like, yeah, mom, I, I know, but he's like, I feel really bad at it. I said, well, how, well, how did you do? He's like, well, I did get a 10. And I'm like, you had a strike? That's incredible. And he goes, no, my, my whole score was a 10. <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh, oh, well that, yeah, that's, that's a pretty bad bowling score, you know? So we're kind of laughing. I said, oh, okay. He's like, mom, and this is actually what he says, mom, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to do it anymore. And I said, all right. Like, and so this, so this, I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but as a parent, a lot of times my child is a mirror and he reflects back to me the things that not only do I know I still need to work on, but the things for sure that I've struggled with. It's like, I get taken back to those moments where I felt those things myself and I'm like, Oh, I got to save him from this. So I looked at him and I said, okay, you don't want to do it because you're not good at it yet. I said, honey, you're, you have to learn. I said, we're going to, we're going to stick this out. I said, first of all, then we talked about commitment, right? Which is a whole thing that I'm as a parent, like if you say you're going to do something, then you're committed to it and you're doing it. I'm that mom. I make him do those things. I said, but buddy, we need to talk about the fact that nobody is good at anything when they first start. Like, it's very rare for someone to be just naturally gifted at something like bowling or anything, right? So he kind of decided like, all right, you know, it's okay. Maybe, maybe I'll keep going. And real quick, Flo, yeah, you saw Hamilton. I want to see that. I'm excited. I want to hear like what you thought. You'll have to tell me what you thought. Um, okay, so we're, we have this discussion. Like you are just starting. And why are you expecting that you'd be excellent? Well, okay. Again, like hands up if any of you relate to being like excellent at all the things. Like, okay, and that sounds egotistical. I don't mean it like that, but it's like I have high standards of excellence. I have high standards of expectation for myself. And when I don't meet them, then I automatically assume that I suck at things, right? Hey, we got Jenny on good morning and Tracy and LaDonna. Let's see, we got Leanne. I was that mom too. If you start something, you see it through. Absolutely. So I'm finding like all these little angles for how to have this conversation with him. Of course, we're starting because we are finishing because we started it, right? Uh, Nicole says she's going through this right now with her son's first year of band and you also won't let him quit. Don't let him quit because when you guys hear how this like has turned out, you're, you're, 
it's that hope and it's not just for parenting okay so this isn't just about parenting but it's just how this came to my soul was through my nine-year-old son at the time like seven right okay so i said to him first of all i said what makes you think you suck at it he's like well all my friends are better at it than i am i said like who so then we have some discussion about who his little friends are and i said how long have they been bowling he said, well, they, they started in kindergarten. I said, all right, well, that means that your friends that you're comparing yourself to have two whole years of experience on you, two whole years. And I said, you need to, I said, if you want to do this and I am going to, I want, I want you to, I said, this is all about choosing to try something new, right? Learning and growing and developing this, this something, whatever it is, right? For you, it's bowling. And I said, first of all, you've got to stop looking at the lanes beside you. Focus on your own lane. You're, you're in a different place. You're starting. I know you're the same age and all of that, but I said, you can't compare yourself to them. They have two years on you. Of course, they're going to be better. They should be better. So I said, do you think that we can approach this and have a good attitude about it? He said, well, you know, he's just, he's fr just so frustrated. So then I happened to actually take him to, we went to see my friend for a weekend and she's like all about having a good attitude about learning. Like, you know, it's fine to struggle, but if you get angry and you get frustrated, then that's not having a good attitude about learning. So she talked to him too and kind of had this whole conversation. It's a shout out to Rika if she's watching, um, if she watches the replay. And uh, he came back and he just kind of kept plugging along. And uh, okay, so real quick, quick, Sherry says, I've been meet judging team reading grit. That's a great book. So she is recommending grit, the power of passion and perseverance. Angela Duckworth is her name. It's a great book. And this is exactly what we're talking about, Sherry. So great plug for a, for a good book. Um, okay, so he continues to bowl. He goes every single week. Every single week, I said, you know, how's it going? I'm not saying what's your score? Because it isn't about the end result with this, right? It is about his attitude towards the struggle at the beginning of everything that starts when you start something new, right? So we had those conversations. I tried to stay very focused, not on his score, but on like, are you enjoying it? You know, what are you thinking? Are you having a good time? Yada, yada. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's going okay. All right, so we get through an entire year. We get to the end, the end of his first season of bowling. And they do the banquet where they have awards, okay? Now I really, I wanna make this really clear. So we're talking about um, learning through failure, growing through failure, and just how to have the grit in this, in the, getting d d digging into the struggle that you feel at the beginning with something. So I wanna make this really clear. I'm gonna share with you like how far he's come. And he got physical awards for these things okay so want to make this really clear the point isn't about the award it about the award but it's just such a, a fun thing because I have physical things to show you so this was his award at the end of that first season okay so he's a second grader at the end of his first season he gets most improved bowler so we had a big discussion about the fact that it doesn't mean he's the best bowler it, you know, it doesn't mean that he won any major awards. He's the most improved, meaning he put his head down and he worked hard and he learned the sport enough that he could become most improved. And so we talked about how important it is to be really proud of growth, not of the end result, right? So the other thing I'll suggest um, that goes along with Angela Duckworth is Carol Dweck, W or D W E. C.K. Dweck. She wrote a book that's all having a growth mindset, which means, so there's a fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset. So this is where I can get a little like educate on you guys, which I don't necessarily mean to, but a fixed mindset is basically like, I'm smart or I'm not. I'm athletic or I'm not. Like I'm a good reader or I'm not. Um, think about like as a woman, like I'm, you know, I'm, I can be successful successful at this business that I've started or I, I can't. I either have what it takes or I don't. It's very black and white and it assumes that we can't change anything and we can't get better. Where a growth mindset is like, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I can change that and here's how and here's what I can do. So 
it's about the mindset. And I really am trying to raise my kids to have that mindset because I'm telling you, you guys, when I was young, I didn't. I was so hard on myself and it still comes through in the way I speak about myself. Okay, so get through that first year. He's most improved bowler. Clearly we're bowling again, right? So this last year was his third grade year. He's bowling, he's going with his friends, he's having a great time. And we make the decision to go to the state bowling tournament, which I'm just like, I have no knowledge of this. Like, is this a big thing? Is it something? Like, I have no idea. Well, okay, here's what happened at state bowling. This is my preliminary, he got a 10 the first time he bowled. He took second. Now it's handicapped, so please like acknowledge this, okay? I don't think my son is some sort of stellar, exceptional athlete. That's not the point. The point is the growth. He got second in individuals, and then him and his buddy were the doubles champions at state bowling this year. So in two short years, he actually had grown enough in this particular skill that he he is winning awards. And they're not participation trophies. He won, he won them. He comes back and I'm like, you you won? Like you're a state champion bowler? <laughs> like what the hell? It's just the coolest thing, right? Okay, so Nicole says, yes, it's such, yes, yet it is, yet is such a powerful word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is that you've been trying to teach to your kids the power of the word of yet. Like, okay, so you you feel like you suck at it right now. You're just not there yet, okay? So I love that you pointed that out, Nicole, because that's actually, that's the takeaway that I want to really share with you guys. Because um, I think, again, like my children, they hold up a mirror in front of me and I'm like, oh, I swear, there are so many lessons that I still need to learn. And this this absolutely is one of them because I really want to have you guys right now think about, okay, so your parents, clearly there's applications here for parenting, right? Teaching our kids to be, um, comfortable with not being successful at it initially and holding off for the opportunity when they will be growing and learning, just having them understand that it's not about necessarily the result, that it's about the opportunity to learn along the way. Clearly, that's a, a very obvious takeaway from this story. But I want to talk to you as, as the woman, the women listening to this right now. I say I I said this on my Facebook Live last week. I went back and watched the replay and I'm like, oh, dang it, I said that. What I tend to say when I know I'm not good at something, and I think in my head it feels like an admission, like of like a like I'm just being real, like, oh, and I'll say, I suck at that. Oh my gosh, I suck at that. I say that. I've said it about cooking, which you know what? Dang it, like I may not be great yet. Nicole, yet, there's my yet. But I fed our, our like over 20 people yesterday and they're our friends and family and I loved on them through food, which I, I don't normally do because I think I suck at it. But you know what, I did it and I felt really good about it. So I'm, I'm encouraging you now to really think about the things that you say, that you speak that over yourself, that you say, oh, I'm terrible at that. Oh, I'm just not any good at that. Okay, so we're all gifted with things that we're naturally good at, things that we're, you know, naturally not that good at. But it does what good does it do us to constantly hammer on the fact that we suck at it and we're terrible at it? Especially if you're in the beginnings of anything. The beginnings of anything, it's always hard. And it's almost always rocky. And it's almost always that feeling of just like, and the, the lane, the lane switching, right? You look next to you and you go, well, they're being so successful. If, if you don't know exactly how they got to where they're at, then we have no reason to compare ourselves to them. So people always talk about highlight reels, right? Like comparing your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. That's what happens when we don't adopt that mindset of growing, that everything you, everything you suck at, <laughs> Even if you do, even if you're terrible at it right now, the fact that you're working towards something different, that you're trying to get better at it, it means that you're developing. You're, you're actually, there's character that's being developed. The skill itself is being developed. And every single time we change and we grow and we shift and we focus and everything gets, let's say we, we do something we've never done before, that, that 
comfort zone, we call it the comfort zone, right? Once it pushes out, it never shrinks back to as small as it was when you started. That's what growth looks like. Instead of saying, oh, you know, I suck at that. Just say, you know, that's not one of my strengths. That's not one of my strengths, but you know, I'm working on it. Or if you're not working on it, that's okay. But why do we have to talk to ourselves like that? So I don't know. We've got, I've got Leanne here saying guilty. I suck at quite a bit of things that I need to grow. Well, we all do. That's the point. Like I just really, you know, thinking about Andrew and his journey with bowling, uh, it has just, it's opened my mind to the fact that I am, I speak harshly to myself and I would never speak to my children that way. You know, he came to me, he didn't know if he wanted to keep doing it. We were talking about bowling. Those of you that are just joining my son, you know, started bowling late, got most improved in his first year, and now he's champion bowler year two. <laughs> and that whole journey of growth and the conversations that we had to have. And it's like when I can turn this on for my children, I am good at this. And when I think about how I speak to myself, I am harsh. I would never look at Andrew or anybody and say, well, yeah, you clearly you suck at this. Oh, my gosh, you suck wouldn't do that. First of all, I don't like my kids using that word, but I say it over myself for the things that I just feel like I haven't gotten down. And so today my encouragement to you is this. Think about the things that you talk about yourself with that kind of tone and ask yourself like a couple things. First of all, who are you helping by speaking that way to yourself? And if you do feel like you're really truly terrible at something, What's a small way that you can stretch the muscle and try to get better at it? Because honestly, if it's something that is holding you back, then it's worth that investment. If it's not holding you back, it's just not one of your strengths. But why do we have to isolate it as something that we're truly just terrible at? Why do that? Because the truth is, it's not, it's not fixed. Nothing is fixed. If you want to get better at it and you decide to put your mind to it, I bet you could. So instead of making these things absolute, like I kill it at this and I absolutely suck at this, see it for what it is. It's a spectrum of behavior. It's choices that you make. If you want to get better at it, I bet you could. So choose to be growth minded. Choose to see that everything can be moved. Everything can be shifted. Because I'm telling you, living in a fixed mindset, that's what actually sucks. If there's nothing positive that comes from assuming you either have it or you don't. You're in or you're out, you're a have or you're a have not. And, you know, I, I get that my this example is from my, my child. Um, but, but it's funny because I have such a determination to teach him that. And right now I'm encouraging you all to, to make sure you're teaching yourselves that and that you're turning that same love and compassion that you would have for a child or somebody else towards yourself. Okay. So that's what I've got for you ladies today. I hope that you guys have a fantastic week. And obviously, I want to hear your story. So I'm going to post a little teaser in the Groove Seekers community. If you're not in the closed group, get in there. Seriously, we have some great conversations in there. And I think the best connections and combo happens over there. Um, second thing I want to just mention before we go is that um, if you guys do not hang out with me on Instagram, this would be the week to do so. Um, I'm going to be featuring some really cool stories this week. Um, first of all, a lot of it is to give some more context and information about the Big Life Retreat that's coming up. So um, I'll, I'll give you a quick tease about it right now. But on September 27th, so it's two weeks from this Thursday, I'll be hosting my uh, second public Big Life Retreat. And so this Big Life Retreat is a virtual get together. So the coolest part about it is that we, we're going to be focused. You're going to have four hours of focus time. Some of it is live together with the other women. Some of it is doing the work by yourselves. So it very much feels like a true retreat experience, but you don't have to leave your house for it. Now, I'm going to say I get that sometimes leaving your house is the glory and the beauty. So I get that that's tricky, but I didn't want women to have to like plan to travel to it and that extra expense. So it's four hours virtual. Okay. Then uh, this week, I'm really going to be giving you a lot of details about it because I really, if, if there is an area of your life where you feel like you're playing smaller than you should or than you'd like, you need to take a look at this retreat because imagine what you could accomplish if I gave you four hours, you gave yourself four hours of time to just focus on that one area of life. And that's what we're going to be doing. I don't dictate what that area of your life is. You get to choose. 
okay? But this week on Instagram Stories, I'm gonna be talking all about what the B, the I, and the G stand for and what we do in the retreat itself. I'm gonna feature four women that have been through it. I'm gonna give you a little like info about who they are and they're gonna share their actual testimonials, their video testimonials about why, why they loved it, how their life is better because of it. And then the third story I'm gonna share this week is a little teaser about the contents because the contents of the box, that's like everybody's favorite part. So you're virtual, but we're unboxing a box of physical stuff together live. It's super cool. You guys are gonna love it. So check me out on Instagram this week. Follow along and take a look at that stuff because that's gonna give you, I'm throwing my pens now. Um, that's gonna give you the information you really need to determine if the Big Life Retreat is right for you. In and after watching all of that, you're like, gosh, I still don't know. I'm like 75% of the way there. Send me an email, call me, tell me how I can help you. Just ask questions because that is what I'm here to do is to help you live bigger in your small town. Um, it's all I'm here to do, okay? So with that, you guys have an amazing week. Thank you guys so much, as always, for hanging out with me live. It's like the best way to kick off the week. Love you guys so much. Have a super, super week. Groove on as usual, and I'll talk to you all soon.